This one's interesting, Will. We got a, a, a record-breaking new jet in development that could redefine what speed really means. <laughs> wow. I, was, I read this article. Great article. Nationalinterest.org. The, the first paragraph had me hooked. So I'll just do a little backstory. This is, this is a jet, a military jet. SR-71 that has been around for a while now. Fastest jet. This thing here? Yeah. The Blackbird. I remember playing it's flight very, simulators when I was a kid, and I'm flying this thing around. It's so cool. Look at it. I mean, it's yeah, so cool. it's very cool. It's very iconic. It's so iconic. And if, if this thing is coming at you, if you're just on the ground, oh. and you're in a hostile territory, and this thing's coming at you, you, got, yeah. you just better reevaluate some things. Because you know you got the military's attention mm -hmm. if they bring one of these bad boys mm -hmm. nearby. So it hasn't changed apparently in a really long time. And they're working on a next version that's going to be... First off, this is the fastest one. It's going to be twice as fast. What? Wait, what? Like a bolt out of the blue, Lockheed Martin's renowned skunk works publicly teased one of aviation's great snark hunts. <laughs> Who's still with me? We're totally in aviation land right now. Revealing plans for a successor to the SR-71, the legendary Mach 3 reconnaissance plane designed with slide rules and retired when the millennials were born. Someone's having fun. It's like Hunter S. Thompson wrote this thing or something. I don't know. It's also, don't miss the sponsored content tag right there. Oh. It's a piece of sponsored Lockheed Martin content. So it's some sort of a war thing. It's incredible. The whole package is incredible. I'm going to continue. That 59-year-old aircraft originally developed as an Uber interceptor still holds the record for fastest sustained supersonic flight at 2,100 miles per hour. Faster than a 50 caliber bullet. I mean, you got to be interested now. Fast. If you weren't interested before. It's pretty fast. This is, it's like, it's something, it's somehow it's fact and fiction all together. I don't know how to proceed. But the new plane just announced the SR-72 will, will fly twice as fast. This is the best line. So fast that at top speed, the very air entering its engines will be moving as fast as an SR-71. <laughs> it's the SR-72. The air entering the engines... Is traveling as fast as the previous jet. What? What? Excuse me? Wait. What are we doing here? But that's because of combustion and thrust, Will. What do you know about thrust? Nothing, really. <laughs> Nothing at all. Keeping combustion and thrust going under such conditions has been likened to lighting a cigar in a hurricane. How good is this article? It, it's why, having, why is this so metaphorical? Uh, that's why I love it. That's why I love it. It's okay, it's almost, it's kind of weird. Gotta, it's weird military poetry. I feel like you just got to read every sentence twice. It's Maybe military. It's, did you even know there was such a thing as military poetry? You know who likes an article like this? Dick Cheney. Yeah. Dick Cheney. Yeah, you gobble it up. Yeah, this is entertainment, this type of article for Dick Cheney. The, and he's smirking when he hears me say that right now. He agrees. The SR-72's planned ability to go from a standing start to Mach 6 and back again is a hat trick no one has been able to pull off. <laughs> so he's, he's talking about hockey now? Right? I love this, man. I just, I just love it. Uh, anyway, so basically what you end up with and the reason you want an incredibly fast aircraft like this is because you can shrink world zones. You can make things a lot closer than they would be with a typical aircraft, a commercial aircraft, a regular fighter jet. You can make things far closer, so much so that it kind of boggles your mind. Because, you know, on this show, we talked about that new commercial flight. I believe it was from New York to Sydney. Uh -huh. It was the new, the new longest flight in the world. And yeah. it was some 18 hours or 17 hours or something like that to go that far. But that's at the current commercial aircraft top speed. 
Now, when the 71, the SR-71 first launched, it was able to shrink Iraq to the size of Rhode Island. And the new SR-72 could shrink the Indo-Pacific to the size of California. <laughs> Impressive. <laughs> <laughs> you could get across the Pacific Ocean. You could get to India from here faster than you could get from Sacramento to Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. That's nutty, man. I yes. can I can tell That's, this is uh, your area of expertise, Will. You're <laughs> adding a lot to this conversation. You're basically saying it's just super fast and yeah, like super, insanely fast. Super duper. Uh, you can't even fathom how fast. Yeah. You can't to 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 just to just pick up and go faster than a fifty caliber, twice as fast as a fifty caliber, and to do so at a sustained speed. Uh, you can the world. You would have to start to perceive the world differently. Yeah. If you could be to India an hour from now, if you could be to California in ten minutes, yeah. it's a bizarre concept. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, you don't get one of these, Will. They don't just give you an SR-72, especially after this particular conversation <laughs> here. But if Dick Cheney wants to go to India in an hour, he gets to go. Yeah. He's not. He's still alive, isn't he? Oh, he had the hunting thing, but he survived. You can't get rid of Dick Cheney. Yeah, he's the one who shot. Okay, he's... How old is he? He's 78. No, you can't get rid of Dick Cheney, no. <laughs> He's eating. Uh, he, he's he's eating the right breakfast cereal. I'll tell you that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's eating the right breakfast. It's got a lot of fiber in it. 